Coming up next, a band took a frigid walk through New York City in minus 20 degree weather in order to nail down today's featured song. And it was appropriate that it was one of the coldest days in New York's history because this was a top 10 single about a gold digging ice queen. Now, a lot of people through the years have wondered if this was based on a real girl. We'll get to the bottom of that. Now, apparently after finishing it, one of the song's co-writers thought it was just a little too pop for this rock band. Wasn't sure if it belonged on the album. But when his bandmates said they loved it, he definitely came around. It was a good choice too, because this song is an undeniable classic rock standard. Now, tag teaming with me today to tell the story, we've got not one, but two founding members from the legendary band, the singer and the guitarist, former singer. They're both ready to give you a behind the scenes look at this truly frosty track next on Professor of Rock. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if your parents didn't know the difference between Transformers and GoBots and you tried to explain it to them because Christmas or your birthday was coming up, you're gonna dig this channel of deep musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now so you always know when our latest interviews and videos are coming out. Uh, I remember trying to explain that to my parents. Uh, also, check us out on Patreon. You can become an honorary producer and help us uh, to curate this content. So I'm excited to bring you yet another episode from our series, Revelations, where featured artists reveal rare stories about their biggest songs and their greatest albums, along with fascinating insight about their careers. For today's episode, we're putting the spotlight back on Foreigner, a band who since their inception has established itself as one of the top rock outfits of all time. I mean, Foreigner has sold in excess of 80 million albums and singles worldwide. Their first five albums all went top five in America, including the number one four in 1981. I mean, their hit catalog includes iconic tracks like Feels Like the First Time, Hot Blooded, Waiting for a Girl Like You, Jukebox Hero, I Wanna Know What Love Is, and on and on and on. But today we're telling the story of their 1977 stone cold classic, Cold as Ice. And giving us the inside scoop is not one, but two principal members of the original Foreigner, Lou Graham and Mick Jones. You're as cold as ice. And I also want to invite you to vote for Foreigner for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They've been nominated for the first time make sure to go to the link below and vote for them. Um, you can vote every single day. Do it. Foreigner got to start in early 76 when guitarist and singer Mick Jones met multi-instrumentalist Ian McDonald at a recording session for Ian Lloyd. Months later, Jones and McDonald formed a band when they connected with four then unknowns, including Lou Graham, who was the lead vocalist of the band Black Sheep. The other three members in that original lineup were bassists Ed Gagliardi, keyboardist Al Greenwood, and drummer Dennis Elliott. The band derived its name from the fact that those original members were drawn from both sides of the Atlantic. Jones, McDonald, and Elliot all hailed from England, while Graham, Gagliardi, and Reenwood are, you know, U.S. citizens. The six-piece set to work writing and recording their first album between April and November of 76, with one of the classic album covers of all time. Said Mick Jones about it, I played in bands before, most notably Spooky Tooth, but Foreigner was the first time that I was the principal writer and had the responsibility of leading the band. We were in the studio, but we didn't really know yet exactly where we were going. But I knew that I wanted to be in a successful group. You're willing to sacrifice our love. So Mick Jones had bought a mini piano and started fiddling around on it. After hitting on some interesting chords he'd never played before, things started to take shape. Lou came over to his house. They started fleshing ideas out. The two would write the majority of Foreigner's material, including today's feature track, Cold as Ice. What Jones would say is that he had never written a full song on the piano before, and he was rather surprised how quickly it worked for him. 
Foreigner's self-titled debut was released on March 8, 1977, and it sold in excess of 5 million copies in the U.S. alone. Peaking at number four on the Billboard Albums chart, it stayed in the top 20 for a year. And aside from Cold as Ice, it featured two other singles. Of course, the number four hit feels like the first time, and the number 20, Long, Long Way From Home. Let's talk about Cold as Ice. Calling it a strange, quirky little song, Mick Jones said this Frozen track was basically a pop song written back to front. It starts out with the title, and it's only later that you realize that the pre-chorus is actually the chorus. Jones was actually worried that it was too much of a pop song, which he didn't believe should be indicative of the band's direction. They were a rock band. However, he was pleasantly surprised when everyone else really dug it. And since he wanted Foreigner to be very versatile, he was fine with adding it to the album after that. Mick Jones wrote Cold as Ice with lead singer Lou Graham and explained that the song was based on the idea, uh, you know, of that stereotypical cold-hearted bad girl. But he emphasized that it wasn't targeted at anyone in particular, although he would add that there was this one girl, you know, back in school that had dumped him. And he admitted that maybe some of that trauma had been channeled into the song. Hey, that trauma is always channeled into the songs, right? <laughs> Said Mick about it, and I quote, subconsciously you draw from stuff, things that happened in your past, things that came out of relationships, the pain and the heartache of love that is so intense and then so deep and then suddenly you lose it. The whole gamut of emotional feeling that you go through in a relationship, sometimes they end and sometimes they last. And when it's the final breakup, you're left with the memories of that relationship. So I go for that quite a bit in this song for sure. Someday you'll pay the price, I know. Another contributing factor to the song was the fact that it was a frigid minus 20 degrees in New York City while the guys were writing it. That definitely fed into the song's atmosphere. In fact, one of the coldest nights in history in New York City helped them nail down the vocal. Lou Graham is going to explain that one next. Really cool story. So let's get into the interviews as we do it. I want to mention our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear, the glasses I always wear in here. The coolest frames that Zenny has right now are their blue light glasses with multicolored lenses. A first of its kind innovation, blocks plus tints technology blocks more blue light than ever, filtering digital screen glare and UV light with eight different tinted lenses to choose from. Just click on the info button right up here to get yours today. Here's the interview. It just showed the power of Foreigner, that you guys were radio friendly, but you rock. You were a band not to be trifled with as far as rock and roll goes. That first album, let's, let's talk about Cold as Ice, because that was such a great follow-up. It came from the debut album and it hit number six pop. It was initially a B side. Yes, it was. Time, right? How funny that was that a, that a B side ended up being the second single. It's a break, perfect breakup song. That sucker punch to the face realized is rock poetry. Yeah. And we we had some stories in the studio on that too. Uh, I, I think we talked about it before. We were we we it came to the part where we were doing cold 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 as, as ice. You know, yeah. and, and and every every note was a different voice. You know. You know that you are right. And we we were we were trying to get the get the rhythm of that and hit the notes straight on for about an hour and a half, and we 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 almost get it, and we we couldn't quite get the timing of it or the, or the pitch of it, and we we just stopped we 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 stopped everything, and this this was in January I think, and we got our I think historically on. it was the coldest day in New York. At that time, yes, and we got our coats on and we walked around the block. Do you know how big a New York block is? Right. We we went to walk around the block. We didn't get back for forty five minutes, <laughs> and we we're freezing. When we got back, <laughs> and, and we took our coats off. We got in front of the mic and we nailed it. Yes. 
<laughs> I love that. Yeah, we. I think. I think we were all afraid we'd have to go for another walk. That's why. We <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I know the inspiration is an old Betty Davis, Joan Crawford film. Yes, it is. Yeah, that, that actually, that there was a video that 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 kind of showed that. You know, you know, not not the not the 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 uh, MTV videos uh, of a little later, but 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 there was a film that went along with that 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 track. Maybe whatever happened to Baby Jane? I think is what it was. Yes, you're right. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> But a three-way collaboration between you and Mick and Ian, and really icy song. Um, it, 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 and it's been used so much in pop culture. I love how they use it in Stranger Things. I dump your ass. Yes. You know, that brought yep. it back to a whole new generation. All of a sudden, I hear, you know, my little, uh, at the time, my little eight-year-old singing it. Or, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's awesome. And I love that, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force. When you're cold as ice. Classic, total classic. I know that Mick playing it on the piano. He had a little mini piano in his, his uh, apartment, started tinkering. That's, that, that's, what we, that's, what we, that's what we wrote everything on. So cool. And uh, Yep. It's been sampled on rap songs. Kanye West used it at the Glattenberry yep. Festival. And You're willing to sacrifice our love. Rock Band 3. Someday you'll pay the price, I know. Probably the largest uh, audience to experience Cold as Ice when they used it in that uh, Wendy's Super Bowl commercial. Right. I mean, talk about an audience, right? That was unbelievable. You win. I mean, it, it was also, you know, self, uh, I mean, it was satirical a bit, you know, like uh, a little bit um, exaggerated in certain areas, but it was, it was a strange, uh, it, it was really, I guess, the main, the first song I'd really completely written on the piano. And um, I had this little... Uh, and it's three hundred, four hundred dollar piano in my apartment, and um, it was there for decoration more than anything else. But I started to to play while I was living there, and um, you know, the, so those are my early forays into actually playing piano, recording uh, piano. And um, you know, so I was groping my way along and uh, I was just coming up with riffs and stuff like that. And that, that came out of the blue and it was snowing outside as it happened. <laughs> it was in, uh, yeah, it, it was actually snowing. Wow. And um, I thought, wow, I've got to be able to, to, to put this into something. And... Um, Really, that was it. You know, it was sort of based on the on the Joan Crawford type of uh, image. You know, the cold-hearted love killer. <laughs> yeah, I mean that describing a lover who's materialistic and selfish, and and that yeah. had to come from a real experience because that was uh, there's there's a lot of emotional turmoil in that song. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's light too, you know. There's the light side, and that's uh, shouldn't take it too seriously. Tell me about um, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What that means to you? Because there were for many years that we were thinking that maybe, uh, you know, maybe it would never happen because you'd never been nominated before. Folk Foreigner had never been nominated before. No, not at all. I, I I couldn't understand that, you know, uh, um, you know I I, I knew I, I I thought it would take some time when when we weren't nominated at first, 
Uh, and what troubled me is is when our peers were nominated and inducted, and we still weren't even nominated. Yeah. That 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 was a big, big flashing light to me that something was wrong. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was. I did not know what it was. You know, uh, uh, I I would have hated to think that 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 there there was a a um, any kind of uh, vendetta or blackballing of us somehow that we didn't know about. You know, and I. I it was very depressing for a while, you know. Um, I mean, it di- didn't change my life or anything, but but whenever somebody brought the subject up, it stung, you know. Congratulations on the uh, on the Hall of Fame nomination, well deserved. Got to get you. We got to get the vote. So I'm calling on all of our viewers. Go in. You can vote multiple, multiple times every day. Go in and vote. Vote for Foreigner, number one. Do it. Awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks so much for your help. It's because people can vote till April 26th. Is that right? Yep. Wow. So we got a whole still a ways, still a ways away yet. You know that? Yeah, we still got 30 days plus to to go in there and vote and and get it going. I think the last time I looked, you guys were third place. Third, yeah, third. But you were right. I mean, you're within a few thousand votes of the one and two. So yeah, Ozzy's still, Ozzy's still number one, right? I think Dave Matthews overtook Ozzy for a day. Did he really? Wow, I didn't yeah. know that. But but only a, a couple thousand votes separate all you guys. Huh. So it's a race to the finish. We got to get you guys number one. And that's kind of fun that it's a race to the finish. It is, yeah. Like, like the good old days in the charts, right? Yeah, but but you know, uh, this race there's no losers. That's right. So Cold as Ice went to number six on the Billboard Hot 100 as well as number 10 on the U.S. cash box chart. It also hit number 32 in Australia, number 20 in Belgium, number 13 on the Dutch, top 40, and number nine in Canada. Reflecting back on the song, Mick said, and I quote, I don't think we've ever played a foreigner show without playing Cold as Ice. It's a big one for the fans, probably one of our top three songs in terms of recognition. It's a proper sing-along, it gigs, everyone likes to belt it out. It's a bit of an oddity, but it's done very well for us. I guess it's part of our identity now as are many of their classic songs. Make sure to vote for Foreigner into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame below. Like I said, they deserve to be first ballot as far as I'm concerned. But we got to change this. We got to help them. Vote for them in the link below. You can vote twice a day. Maybe it's once a day. I don't know. Every day. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about Cold as Ice and about Foreigner and about uh, the Hall of Fame. What do you think? What do you think about the song? What are your memories of this song? What do you think about that first album? One of the classic first albums, debut albums ever. Let's have a great discussion. If you like our content, we invite you to subscribe below. Love to have you. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. <laughs>